Hey guys, it's Quinn from Canada. It's part two of Constraints Tutorial. So grab your tea of choice and make sure she's nice and dirty. And come join me by the computer. All right, guys, let's start at this brand new here because you know what? I know nobody saved the last one. So create a line and this time just make it downwards about 20, 30 degree angle. We'll adjust it later. Now let's use one of my favorite constraints right here. It's a great cheat, the lock constraint. When you click on an edge here, it will automatically make a horizontal and a vertical constraint to your origin point. And you know what? Let's adjust this just a tad. Of course, you can just double click on here. We'll make this 20. We'll make this one 30. Let's use a length constraint again right here and we'll make that a 40 and now just to lock in our degree of freedom again let's use our angle constraint so fix the angle from here and we'll fix it to there we'll make it 20 degrees beautiful so let's keep this going let's draw another line anywhere on the screen so now that you have this line drawn what if I wanted to join this guy to this guy? This is the constraint we would use. This is the coincidental constraint. It's used to put two lines together. So take that to that. And we're down to two degrees of freedom because this point is now locked on a horizontal and a vertical. So all that's left for us to do is rotate and length. So new constraint time. If I wanted to make this, and I'll exaggerate it here, the same length as this line, I could use this. This is the equal constraint. Click on this line, click on this line, and now these are both equal. See how this has an equal constraint and a six beside it? That's telling me that that's the sixth constraint on the list. So constraint number six is that guy. All right, guys, we got one degree of freedom that we have to restrict, and then we're fully constrained, the full enchilada, baby. So let's do that by using this guy right here, the perpendicular constraint. Click the two lines you want to do, and check this out. That is a perfect 90 degree angle. Since in engineering, a lot of times we want to design 90 degree angles. Awesome, awesome little tool. All right, let's rock off another one. Let's draw a line. And let's say that we want this line attached to this line, but not at the endpoints, just somewhere on the line. Well, this is the constraint that we would use for that to fix point. So for that, you're going to need to click an end point like this guy and you're going to need a line so we could use this line we can also use our reference horizontal and our reference vertical line so in this case you know what let's just go to our horizontal line and there you go so it's always stuck onto it now so let's hit escape though and let's move this line around so i can show you an interesting quirk check this out bet you weren't expecting that this point is fixed to this line, but in an infinite matter. So we can keep going up and we can keep going down. And as you can see, it will always follow that line, but it might not necessarily be on this line. This is something that has gotten me in the past. So if you're using this constraint, you might need a second constraint to lock down a location. So in this case, we can use a distance constraint like this guy here. Let's click on the line. So there's my point there and there's my other point highlighted. And now I have a location. So I'm just going to make this 30 just to make it simple. And now you'll notice that if I try to move this line, it's now locked down to that location. If you're locked onto the horizontal or the vertical line, you can use the horizontal or vertical constraint, such as this guy right here. So click, click, and yeah, let's even out to 120. Let's look at a different constraint. Draw a line. So let's attach this endpoint to here, 
And we already know how to do that through our create concentric constraint. There you go. And once again, let's use our point constraint just to attach this to here, our horizontal line. Well, now let's say I want to make this line parallel to this line right here. Well, here you go. Create parallel constraint. Now watch this. See, we only got one degree of freedom left right here, which is, of course, the angle. So if I click here and I click here, there you go. These are now parallel. And again, 14 there tells me that constraint 14 is the parallel constraint that we're looking for. So now we've done a lot of constraints and you might be thinking, well, why, why would you use these? I mean, yeah, things are locked in, you know, I've had a few too many beverages and I can't accidentally move lines or point to, to screw up my sketch. But what if I want to alter something? Well, this is where constraints come in. Let's say this angle is wrong. Well, we can click here and let's say we'll change it to a 30 degree angle. So you'll notice not only did this angle update, but so did this angle because it has a perpendicular constraint. At the same time, this angle here updated because it's locked in on the other side by this horizontal constraint. And because this guy has a parallel constraint to this guy, this angle has updated as well. Another change we can do here is if I click on this guy and make this guy longer, then this line should get longer as well. And because the length here is fixed, the length between this line and this line should get longer. So let's check this out. We'll change it to 50. And as I said, this got longer, same 90 degree angle. This guy angle changed because it's parallel. It stayed to match that. And so the distance had to change in order to come accommodate for that. All right, guys, that's it for the week. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to scotch scribe. And like always, stay smart, stay safe. Cheers, boys. Let's